Here in New York City, one of our local newspapers, the New York Daily News, uh, is reporting on the nuclear crisis in Japan on its front page today uh, like this. Japan nuke disaster. Panic. Can you see that? Here's a closer look at it. I think we have. Yeah. Uh, black background, giant white block letters, all caps, PANIC! Exclamation point. Here's the thing. There are many increasingly worrying developments coming out of Japan every single day. And while it can be fun to sort of panic about, say, the prospect of Donald Trump as president or the really clicky, finicky new redesign at jalopnik.com, which I find very frustrating and that's a website I like, while it can be sort of fun to panic about stupid stuff like that, it is not a good idea to panic about real things which are really legitimately scary, which is to say you, New York Daily News, you and your scary, screamy headline, you are not helping. As the terror-inducing New York Daily News front page informs us by way of screaming block letters. Uh, there has been something of a run on potassium iodide pills. Potassium iodide is an over-the-counter drug that can be used to guard against a specific kind of health hazard from a specific kind of radiation exposure. Uh, it is not best described, as our friends at the Daily News chose to put it, as an anti-nuke pill. It's not like it's a big umbrella that just protects you from nuclear fallout. It's not, you know, just, just pop this magic umbrella pill and you're done. It is not like that. What it can do is help the thyroid not absorb radioactive iodine, as Lori Garrett was just explaining. If you are exposed to radioactive iodine, taking potassium iodide can essentially um, prevent your thyroid from taking up the radioactive stuff because it will be uh, plumb full of the not radioactive kind. Uh, this sort of thing does not protect against other radioactive isotope, isotopes. It, it is just radioactive iodine. The primary manufacturer of this drug in the U.S. now says it is out of stock because so many people want it because of the nuclear crisis in Japan. The president of the company telling Agence France Press today, quote, the spike is enormous. We were out of stock by Friday night. But we're not talking about a spike in demand coming just from Japan, where all the radiation actually is. Quote, the demand mostly is coming from the west coast of the United States. Public officials have been campaigning hard against the apparently widespread impulse among American west coasters to respond to the nuclear crisis in Japan by buying potassium iodide. The LA County Public Health Department went so far as to issue a health advisory cautioning residents specifically to avoid taking it, saying, quote, residents who ingest potassium iodide out of concern of possible exposure from this situation are doing something which is not only ineffective, but could also cause side effects. California's State Health Department set up a radiation hotline to answer Californians' concerns about radiation, much to the state's dismay. As of yesterday, when they answered those calls, many, many, many of the people calling were just calling to try to buy potassium iodide pills. The health department spokesman said that was, quote, very concerning to us because you really should not take that without professional advice unless you are within the zone of the nuclear event. If you are not watching me from northern Japan right now, you are not within the zone of the nuclear event. When asked by the Associated Press about everyone on the American West Coast who's trying to get their hands on potassium iodide pills, the director of radiation health physics at Oregon State University told the AP, quote, tell them, stop, don't do it. According to the AP, the federal government already stockpiles the drug and offers enough for states to give doses to every American resident within 10 miles of a nuclear plant. So New York Daily News headline writers, be darned. Let's ditch the instruction to panic. And let's talk to someone who can tell us what the real risks are and what they are not. Joining us now is David Richardson, professor in the Department of Epidemiology at the University of North Carolina. Professor Richardson, thanks very much for your time today. It's nice to have you with us. Thank you for having me. Uh, the White House is recommending that U.S. citizens stay 50 miles away uh, from the Daiichi plant. The Japanese government is recommending 20 miles. Um, would exposure levels be substantially different between those two different distances? Um, yes, I, I, exposure levels are going to be different. I mean, the, there's been a projection of what the exposure levels are under different models. Uh, the NRC is following projections for a four-reactor accident. Um, that said, right now we don't have good information about how the exposures are, are distributed, um, what's been released and where it's going. Um, so. It's, uh, it's, it's, not, it's very unlikely that the exposures are traveling in concentric circles. Um, but uh, I think the, the judgment has been that, yes, a 50-mile radius is what's been advocated. In, in terms of um, 
what, what has been released thus far in terms of radiation? Obviously, we've had some radioactive uh, releases from those plants. That's what we've seen in terms of the different readings that we've had from different Japanese cities about how much radiation they're detecting there. The bigger worry is that there could be an even larger uh, d uh, release of radiation at some point in the future. Based on what's happened so far, what might happen in the future, who will be facing the greatest risk as a, release, uh, as a result of, of radioactive fallout? Is it mostly defined by where you are geographically, or is it mostly defined by who you are? That's a great question. Um, the, I, right now, the people facing the greatest risk are obviously the workers. And when you, if you move beyond that to consider people who are not at risk of being primarily externally exposed to radiation from working in high radiation fields, you're getting into the area of concern about people who are going to inhale or ingest radioactive particles or radioactive gases. And as you mentioned earlier in the show, um, the uptake and the dose delivered to different specific organs, for example, the thyroid, does depend on your age. And it also depends on other individual characteristics. Um, so age is going to be an important factor, but dose is, um, is a critical factor, and dose is going to vary as a function of location and distance. Um, to be clear, in terms of the difference in ages, it's kids who are most worse, who are who are uh, who have the most at risk in terms of uh, radioactive iodine exposure. Uh, right, and it's that's for several reasons. One of them is simply the smaller mass of the thyroid. Are iodine pills a good preventive measure for people in Japan? Um, I think that they should, uh, in Japan and in the United States both, as you, as you mentioned just recently, I think people should follow the advice of the public health authorities. Um, if history is a, is a, can give us some guidance, uh, a lot of the route of uptake uh, after environmental releases of radioiodine is um, not through inhalation of, of the gas itself, but through kind of milk pathways of the iodine accumulating and people taking it up later. So. Um, as much as there's been a focus on, um, let's say, therapeutic prevention through the taking of potassium iodide, there are other measures. Uh, simply avoiding um, milk consumption or using tinned milk um, is, a, is another option. David Richardson, professor in the Department of Epidemiology at the University of North Carolina. Thanks very much for your time tonight, Professor. It's good to have you here. Thank you.